Welcome back to In Layman's Terms and today we have a new video. I have spent a lot of time over the past two years setting up my new home with what I believe are the best TVs on the market. I felt it might be beneficial for others to see what I have learned and discovered along this journey. Guys, as this channel is just getting started, I'd really appreciate any love in the comment section and please feel free to smack that like button for me, it helps me and the channel a ton. Let's get to the review. Before I get into the review, I briefly wanted to touch on my wall mounting experience. Now the G1 has been engineered from the ground up to be wall mounted and you can really tell. Coming in close second was the Samsung QN900A. It only has one port on the back for the one connect cable and the VESA mounts are placed in the center of the TV making it quite straightforward. The C1, the VESA mounting points are placed at the very bottom of the TV making it extremely uncomfortable when you go to wall mount it. If you're looking at purchasing one, please just keep that in mind. When I came into this, I was thinking about my testing philosophy. I was thinking, should I calibrate the TVs? Should I try and dial them in so they look comparable before testing? This is when I concluded that 99% of people won't ever calibrate their TVs. It's either going to be too expensive or too difficult to find someone to do it. So I decided to just let the TVs do their thing. These TVs are designed and built on very different technologies and both have serious pros and cons. Sometimes when people talk about OLED and QLED, it reminds me of these sad debates people used to get into online like Xbox versus PlayStation or Apple versus Samsung. I believe everyone can agree those days are over. Regardless of what brand you cheer for, Xbox rules. All the brands are essentially at technological parity. They are all good. They all perform very similarly and it's down to a few personal preferences. Online I often find a group of consumers that are blindly loyal to their brands while others can definitely agree both have a lot to offer. So when it comes to QLED versus OLED, I wanted to spend a decent amount of time with both and see which one I naturally gravitated towards. When it comes to purchasing a TV, I am a gamer first, so gaming features are quite high on my list. I want to make sure that I'm future proofing my TV so it supports the latest HDMI 2.1 specifications and features. When it comes to HDMI 2.1, it's very much like HDR in the sense that not all TVs are equal. Simply because the box says HDMI 2.1 or HDR, it doesn't mean it's going to perform the way you expect it to. With HDMI 2.1 and gaming, you want to make sure that the TV can support all the features your shiny new Xbox or PlayStation can take advantage of. For example, Auto Low Latency Mode or ALLM, otherwise known as Game Mode. This essentially puts the TV into a mode when a game is launched, it disables all the picture processing in order to have the TV lower the input lag between the button press and the action on the screen. Variable Refresh Rate or VRR. VRR is another confusing topic. Some brands offer their own version of VRR. Let's call it premium VRR, such as AMD FreeSync or NVIDIA G-Sync. If you're a console gamer, all you need to know is FreeSync is what you're looking for. HDR or high dynamic range. Once again, this is another topic that people can get quite confused about, so please keep in mind when I discuss these topics, I am generally oversimplifying. HDR is another feature set that some brands will offer a premium version of in the form of Dolby Vision or HDR10+. HDR10 is known as the base layer or common layer of the format. If you watch any premium HDR content such as Dolby Vision or HDR10 Plus on a TV that doesn't support it, the TV will fall back to the common layer of HDR10. In my humble opinion, premium HDR is great, but it only really adds an additional 5-10% to of performance on top of HDR10. I often play games in Dolby Vision on my C1 and it does look amazing, but then I switch over to my QN900A which doesn't support Dolby Vision. However, because of its huge jump in brightness, I often feel that HDR looks more impactful and immersive on the Samsung. Now that I've covered the basics, I wanted to give the Xbox and PlayStation a good run on both TVs and see how I feel after a few weeks of game time. All three TVs support the important HDMI 2.1 features for current gen consoles including 4K at 120. The Samsung has a little bit more headroom as it's an 8K display, but don't hold your breath for any 8K games or content in the future. The first thing I notice 
every time on the C1 is how dim OLED really is, even in the vivid mode. Now don't get me wrong, the C1 is a gorgeous TV and if you had nothing to compare it to on a daily basis, I can absolutely see why people are so loyal to OLED. The contrast is simply unbeatable. The way it looks in a dark room, amazing. However, the moment you introduce a window or some natural light, the game completely changes. The C1 and G1 can't really pull off its party trick in a well-lit room. I often find the reflection handling is quite poor, and a reflection from a bright window or light source can literally take over a large portion of the screen. That aside, when it comes to gaming, what can I say? I do believe OLED by nature is undisputably the king in terms of pixel response time. Fundamentally, the pixels on an OLED will always respond quicker, but that's not all there is to it. When I make these reviews, I really try not to get sucked into the hype. I try to go off how the TV feels rather than point out specific items from a spec sheet. I really do feel that a lot of other reviewers out there are so biased because of kickbacks, freebies, whatever it may be. Some channels only review LG TVs and you have to ask yourself, how many fingers do LG have up in there? When I jump over to the QN900A, the TV comes alive. Yeah, it doesn't support Dolby Vision, but seriously, play it for a day and tell me you still miss it. The TV screams in HDR, it actually has shocked people. Now over to the game bar. Yeah, Samsung was the first to implement the game bar, which displays the current frame rate, VRR and HDR status and allows some minor adjustments. Keep in mind, LG totally did a nice copy and paste job, but hey, it's good for everyone. While we are still here, let's briefly discuss the elephant in the room, blooming. Yes, the Neo QLED still displays some significant blooming, and the only time I ever really notice it is when I'm looking for it. Samsung has done a great job with mini LED, and with around 2000 dimming zones, the black levels are getting pretty close to OLED standards. I often feel that Samsung QLED is narrowing the gap closer to OLED than OLED is to QLED. Whilst OLED can hit around 6 to 700 nits in peak brightness, the Samsung is punching around 2000 nits and beyond. Pardon the pun, but it's night and day. As I was making the video, I definitely felt that there would be a bunch of haters in the comments sticking up for OLED and guys, don't get me wrong, OLED is awesome. But when you have something in the next room to compare it to every day, you can't ignore the Samsung. As a result of all my time and testing, I'm actually thinking next year, I might sell the C1 and look for a better option. Coming up to my final thoughts, don't always believe the hype. I know some of the most reputable reviewers out there sing OLED all day, and for good reason, I get it. But most of these guys aren't gamers. Hang on you say, OLED is best for games, right? Well yeah, and no. Fundamentally, OLED is a superior technology for gaming. But what did I say about pointing out items from a spec sheet? I wanted to come at this from a how does it make me feel standpoint, a perspective I haven't really seen many people approach yet. Everyone seems to get on the hype train and for some reason, the train didn't stop at my place. All day, every day, if you want a TV to impress you, knock your socks off with blasting HDR and buttery smooth 120 frames per second gaming without worrying about static content burning in or the panel slowly dimming over time, at least for this year, Samsung is winning. And OLED supporters, you're asleep at the wheel.